Hello, my name is Anna and I love trying vintage recipes. So today I'm trying three soup recipes from 1978. Today's recipes come to us from Better Homes and Gardens, Soups and Stews Cookbook. And I will talk a little bit more about this book later. It's official, soup season is here. Actually, I eat soup year round. There's not really a season for me, but there's something cozy about having a nice hot bowl of soup as the temperatures drop. Now, I think with certain soups, people have a very specific idea of what they're getting. You hear the name of a soup and you think like, this is brothy, this is creamy, this is whatever. But I tried to choose three soups that were maybe just a little bit different and maybe not quite like ones that you've had before. Or maybe you have, I don't know. I don't know your life. <laughs> anyway, you'll see what I mean when I start cooking. My first recipe is going to be this buttermilk corn chowder. And maybe it's not so very different than what you're used to, but I have never made corn chowder with buttermilk. So the first thing I'm going to do is cook one strip of bacon that I've diced up in my saucepan. And I just need to cook that until it is crisp. My bacon is all cooked. And now I'm just gonna use a fish spatula to remove it to a plate and let it drain. The bacon fat will stay in the pan because we're gonna use it to cook some onions. So now I'm adding my diced onions. And I'm supposed to let those cook just a little bit. Let's get those spread out here in the pan. I have some chicken broth here and I'm not supposed to add all of it. I'm supposed to save some of it for when I have to thicken the soup. And I'm cutting this recipe in half so I'll tell you the amounts in the description down below. And I'm just gonna scrape up the bits on the bottom of the pan here, deglaze the pan a little bit with that liquid. And now I'm adding potatoes, just diced potatoes. And corn, I'm using frozen corn. The recipe says you can use frozen corn or you can use fresh corn if you have it, which would be phenomenal, but I don't have it right now. And just look, look what I have here. That is celery, folks. That is left over from my ring around the tuna mold or whatever it's called. I can handle celery in soups, like cooked in soups, as long as it's not like just celery, you know? So this is a great way. I actually, one of the reasons I wanted to do this soup recipe is because I have a lot of things in my pantry right now that need used up and soup is a great way to do that. I have to bring the liquid in my soup up to a boil. It'll be there soon from the sounds of it. Before I do that, I need to add my salt and pepper. Forgot about that step. Very, very important. And don't worry. I know this looks like very, very little liquid, but there's going to be some more added later. Soup is boiling. And next I'm gonna reduce the heat to low, cover it, and let it simmer for 15 to 20 minutes. About a little over 15 minutes later. And the potatoes are all tender and cooked through. There's not a lot of liquid in there right now, but we're gonna add some more. So I have this last about quarter of a cup of chicken broth that I reserved, and I'm gonna add some flour to that and whisk that together to thicken the soup. So I'm making a slurry. Uh, sometimes you do this with cornstarch and water, but yeah, you can do it with flour as well. Just make sure that that is well mixed and then add it to the mixture here according to recipe directions. I actually cut the heat on this because there was so little liquid. I mean, things were starting to stick, but I'll bring it back here in a second. But see how thick that got? It's like almost kind of gloopy. Not to worry though, because now I'm adding my buttermilk. You can't have buttermilk corn chowder without buttermilk, right? So I'm gonna bring my heat back and I'm just supposed to heat this through now. So I'll let this heat through and then I'll give it a taste. So I have my little bowl of soup here. I'm just smelling this as it cooked. I mean, it smells really good when I was cooking the vegetables. And after adding the buttermilk, it has like a very interesting like tart scent. And I just, I have some expectations for the flavor. So I'm gonna give this a try. Hmm. Mmm. Okay. So when I've made corn chowder in the past, or usually like if I've eaten it, it's more cream, half and half, whole milk kind of based. This, because of the buttermilk, has a very like tangy tart flavor to it. And because of the potato, there's like equal amounts of potatoes and corn in here. I feel like this is like less of a corn chowder and more of a potato soup with corn in it. It's, it's very interesting, but it's very tasty. Mmm. 
and then you get the salt from that bacon. So the bacon was really just a garnish. I would put more bacon in it. Yeah, to balance out that like tangy flavor. I think it could really complement it really well. Also, I just like bacon. <laughs> Definitely different than any corn chowder I've ever tried, but really, really delicious. Next up, I'm trying this broccoli and ham soup. But first I wanna show you my new fall apron. I feel like I didn't get to show you this very much in the first soup recipe. I actually bought this in July and I've made myself wait <laughs> until now to wear it in a video. I don't actually know if this is still available, but I did get it at Anthropology. I don't usually shop there, but you know, I like to pop in and smell the candles and whatnot. And they had this gorgeous apron. If it's available, I'll link it. I don't know, but like, mm, look at it. But back to the soup. When I think broccoli soup, I usually think like a creamy soup, a cheesy soup. This recipe is neither of those things. And I, I have to say, I've never tried anything quite like it. So I was really intrigued. So I'm going to start by melting a little bit of butter in a saucepan. Now I'm adding some diced onion to the pan and then some diced ham. I'm just using some deli ham that I already had. Leftover ham would be great for this or like a ham steak or something. But part of the reason I wanted to make this video was to try and use up some of my ingredients. So we're using, we're trying to use what we have here. Some garlic. That bird in the background, I swear. <laughs> I have the windows open because it's so nice outside and the bird seems to want to make an appearance in my video. <laughs> I don't even know if you can hear him, but. <laughs> He's pretty vocal, or she, I don't know. And I have a can of condensed chicken broth. This is definitely not a regular thing that I buy. A lot of times I'll go for, you know, if I'm buying chicken broth, I'll go for the carton. Sometimes I make it myself. And then other times I use better than bouillon, but I almost never buy this condensed version, but that's what it called for the recipe. There is going to be water added to this, so I suspect that you could probably figure out your proportions and just use broth, you know, and not then leave out the water. And I've got my broccoli. This is frozen broccoli. I did thaw it for like 30 seconds just so I could cut up the pieces and make them a little smaller. Again, something I had in my freezer that I wanted to clean out. And some water. I'll have the full recipe in the description down below as usual chopped tomatoes, undrained, that's with the juice. This, this soup is so interesting to me. Maybe you have had it, but I have not. I've not really heard of this soup. So just because I haven't had it and it seems unusual to me, you know, maybe it's commonplace for you or your family. So tell me about that in the comments. And then it calls for elbow macaroni. I thought I had some, but I don't. So I have this medium shell pasta that I'm gonna be using instead. The name of the game is using things up again, <laughs> but just, yeah, the recipe does call for elbow macaroni and some nutmeg, really interesting. I like a nutmeg in a lot of savory dishes though. So this is probably gonna be tasty to me. So that's it on the ingredients. Now I just need to bring this to a boil, cover it and let it simmer. So I'm reducing the heat and I'm gonna let this go. It says eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna let it go for the full 10 because my pasta needs just a little bit longer to cook than elbow macaroni. So I'll see you in a bit. This soup smelled so good cooking. It says that you can add salt and pepper to taste. I'm not gonna add anything just yet because I know that the ham is gonna be very salty. And then I use that condensed chicken broth with some water um, and that has the potential to be very salty as well. 10 minutes was just about right for the pasta that I used. Let's see, I gotta get some ham, some broccoli, tomato, and a pasta. What? <laughs> that is really delicious. I sprinkled a little bit of Parmesan cheese on the top that was included in the recipe as well. It's not like any broccoli soup that I've ever had, really. For me anyway, it's usually like a creamy broccoli soup. This is a brothy, tomatoey broccoli soup, but it is just delicious. It is so good, really flavorful. Doesn't really need anything. For me, for my taste, it doesn't need any extra salt or pepper. I don't really taste the nutmeg. There was just a teeny tiny bit in there. I was trying to think of my like list of soups in my head and I'm like, what is this similar to? It's not quite a minestrone. I mean, it has pasta in it, but usually minestrone doesn't have like ham in it and it has like beans and some other things. Not like broccoli soup, um, not even like your straight up vegetable soup. Like this is, this is not quite like any soup I have ever had, but I think that it's gonna go into my 
rotation regularly because it's so good. And I would encourage you to give this one a try. Mm. Mm. So next up I have potato cheese soup. I've got some boiling salted water in a little pan here. And then to that I am adding potatoes. Whoops. <laughs> and some onion. So I'm gonna reduce the heat on that a bit. Cover. And now I have to let that cook for 15 to 20 minutes until the potatoes are soft. So about 15 minutes later, my potatoes are tender and I'm supposed to just mash these lightly. Whatever leftover liquid just kind of stays in there. It's gonna become part of the soup. You know, you don't need a very smooth mash with this according to the recipe. So my next step is just a little bit different. I have to put, you know, the potato mixture into a measuring cup and then add enough milk to make two and a half cups. I'm gonna say that looks like, I mean, I smoothed it out. It's about a cup and I need to add enough milk to make two and a half cups. I'm just gonna use some whole milk. And I'm gonna mix that up a bit because I want it to come out of the measuring cup a little more easily when I'm ready to use it. There's like an owl having a fight out there. <laughs> we get a lot of wildlife in our backyard and I do love it. It's just kind of funny to listen to sometimes. So I have some butter that I'm gonna put in the pan. So we're all melted and I'm adding flour and I do know that I'm making a roux. <laughs> Some of you did kindly let me know that butter and flour mixed together is a roux. And I do know that, I just, you know, I don't always mention the name of things. I also need to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I'm supposed to have fresh parsley for this. I don't, I'm so sorry. We're going dried here, but I bet this would be absolutely de delicious with fresh. I just, it's not something I have at this moment. Sometimes I start cooking and I think I have something when I really don't. And instead of starting completely over, I just decide to kind of keep going and doing my best with what I got. Now, our potato milk mixture is making its triumphant return. We're gonna splash. I probably got it on the camera. This should thicken up in just a little bit. Whisk that a little just to make sure everything is incorporated. Final ingredient, we have a little bit of shredded Swiss cheese. And this is kind of the part that makes it a little bit different for me because I don't think I've ever had a potato soup with Swiss cheese in it. So it says to stir that in until it's partially melted. Out of all of the soups, I feel like this one might have the potential to be a little bit under seasoned to my palate. I cooked the potatoes in a little bit of salted water. You know, there's a little bit of salt and pepper in the soup. There's a little cheese. It could add up to be enough, but we'll see. So I'm gonna give this a taste. It is nice and thick. It's just the right thickness, I think. It's a little bit on the under seasoned side, but that doesn't make it bad. I would either add like seasoned salt or garlic salt or something like that. It's a great starting point, I think, for potato soup, but I think I would add just like a little, little something extra to it. You could probably add some ham to it. You know, I've had a lot of like ham and potato soups. The Swiss cheese is so mild that it doesn't, it doesn't boost the flavor quite enough. So. I think, again, good start with this one, but it needs just a touch more seasoning. Before I start getting into today's book, I did wanna mention something. I have had a few questions about where you can find the recipes that I, that I make, and I put them in the description box underneath the video, and I fully understand it's not always easy to find. Unfortunately, YouTube has control over that layout. I don't, and occasionally they change it, which is you know, not the best. I'm hoping I can clear it up a little bit and kind of try to walk you through where they are located. So between the video itself and the comment section, there's this box. It, for me, it looks like sort of like a grayed out box. And then there's like the beginning of the description, all of that, just a few sentences. And then there's this little spot that says more. So if you click on more, it'll expand the whole box. And then you can see the full description. You can see my links. You can see, most importantly, the recipes if you would like to make any of these. I do try, if I remember, to include the page numbers with the recipes, just in case you happen to have one of the cookbooks that I cook from and you wanna use the book. Sometimes I understand that is a little bit easier to do. Hopefully my little explanation will help you find those recipes. So we've got Better Homes and Gardens, Soups and Stews Cookbook from 1978. And just get a load of that like font, that lettering style. I love it. It really speaks to a very specific time to me, that bubbly kind of like swirly letter. I love it. And these like little kind of like 
swoops at the end. Kind of unfortunately to me, <laughs> this matters to me. Better Homes and Gardens, as we moved toward the late 70s and the 80s, started to get away from those super colorful front and back covers and the recipe layouts became a little bit different. You may have noticed when I was showing the recipes, they started kind of going in this row fashion rather than like across the page. Not my favorite, honestly, for me, and this is maybe just me and my brain, it's kind of like harder for me to read a recipe like that or find it on the page and I find myself like my eyes wandering a little bit and you know, I'm in grave danger of <laughs> cooking from three recipes instead of one by accident. So I had to be very careful about that. But that doesn't mean that this isn't a good cookbook and that it doesn't have good recipes because it absolutely does. And we still have some cute like line drawings and things. There are some photos in here. I don't think there are any photos of the <laughs> dishes that I chose, unfortunately, once again. And I mean, this is a real treat too, like that font style. We've got a photo here. I think is that, that is creamy celery zucchini soup. So here's the photo. I'm probably never going to make it because um, I don't really want cold celery soup. That's just my take. That is my tastes. I'm not saying that it's bad because you might like it and that is fine. You're allowed to like what you like. And I want to reiterate that. <laughs> this photo, like it just makes me think those very earthy, like earth tony kind of times. This photo itself is kind of dark, even with the, whatever lighting I have going on. Oh, you can kind of see it in the camera better actually. The brown and that like stoneware that really makes me think of a very specific time. I love it. <laughs> it's very nostalgic for me. Oh, and look at this. You've got a beautiful bread loaf here, that crusty bread. I am such a soup person. I mentioned early on that I do eat soup all year round, even though soup season kind of makes me think like cool, gloomy, moody, winter time, fall time. Soup is good all year to me. There's also a really cool section in here, actually a couple. That's It's more than just soup recipes. You've got your soup making basics. So it tells you how to make stocks and how to make broths and all of those things. I do occasionally, most of the time, if I'm making stock. It's like a chicken stock or turkey or poultry of some kind. That's just usually like the easiest one for me to make. So I'll make a batch. I do it in the instant pot and then I freeze it. I like to do this especially around the holidays when I'm making things like stuffing or turkey gravy or whatever. And then it also has this whole page on like noodles and dumplings, all those things that make your soups extra, extra yummy. If you want to make those things by hand, you don't have to. And then there's this page with like crackers and croutons. Visually, this is like one of my favorite sections. It has a lot of really cool drawings. The pages are kind of like this different color. It's like tan, but it's a little speckly in the background. And I think it's like the most unique section of the soup making cookbook, really. Getting into the soups that I cooked today. I went through this book several times because I really wanted to choose soups that were just like maybe a little different. Like you might notice, I like to choose recipes that are maybe a little different and recipes that were close to soups that I'd eaten before, but maybe with like a little bit of a twist. Starting with the buttermilk corn chowder, super tasty, but definitely different. A lot of the corn chowder recipes that I have had, you know, sometimes they have like, they start with like cream corn and chicken stock and whole kernel corn, green chilies, that kind of thing. Um, and they are like really creamy and delicious in a different way than this one was. This one with the addition of buttermilk had that really good tartness to it. Sort of like when you add sour cream to a soup, but like amplified. That buttermilk was really tart. I mean, I like that flavor. I thought it was really good and really interesting. I do think that if you choose to make this soup, if you make it for someone else, make it for your family, maybe let them know about the buttermilk because otherwise it just kind of looks like a creamy corn soup and you're gonna get that mouthful of like butter, tart buttermilk and it might be a little weird at first, but I think it's really tasty. Standout for me was the second soup, I think. That broccoli ham soup. What a different kind of soup. I even searched on Google just generally like brothy broccoli soup, brothly broccoli ham soup, you know, that kind of thing. And I really didn't come up with much of anything. Pretty much all of the broccoli soups that came up were like cheesy broccoli, cream of broccoli. So that one was really different, but so good. Like such a nice surprise. That smoky flavor from the ham with the broccoli, the tomatoes, like everything was so flavorful and I really enjoyed it. And I think it would freeze really well. I think out of the three soups, that one would probably Probably freeze the best. Really tasty. I am definitely gonna make that one again. Our third soup, the potato cheese soup. 
I've had potato soup before. I tried this one because it uses Swiss cheese and I've never had a potato soup with Swiss cheese before. You know, maybe it's something you make regularly, but it's not something I've had. Mm, I was a little bit underwhelmed on the flavor, but I think it's easily remedied. I think you just need to add, you know, maybe a little bit of salt. I think it could benefit from some garlic too, or ham. I think like it's a great base, but maybe if you want to put vegetables in it, maybe make it a potato broccoli ham soup. It just needs a little bit of a boost. My other thought was that instead of cooking the potatoes and onions in water, maybe cook those in chicken broth or vegetable broth or something like that. I think that could bring a lot of much needed flavor to the party as well. I mean, it doesn't make it bad. I mean, I would definitely still eat that soup. I'm gonna eat that soup but it's just like a little bit mild on the flavor. And maybe that's something that you like. If you don't want something that's like super salty and super in your face with, with seasoning, this might be the potato soup for you. Overall, great soups, new soups to add to my soup repertoire. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have one of those? I don't know. Yeah, if you're looking for something to keep you nice and warm in the winter, maybe give one of these a try. If you love cookbooks and recipes from the 1970s, I have an entire playlist and I will link it in the description down below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post videos about food, vintage cookbooks, and retro recipes every week. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!